I'm going to show you how to use Google Earth briefly. This is your search panel. You enter in your address, description, whatever you're looking for, like pizza near New York City. In this case, we're going to enter in one of my friend's farms out in Valley Center, California. Got a lot of different options within this panel before we hit enter. Some controls for tilt, panning, zooming. You can zoom with your mouse wheel. You can click and drag to move around. And then you can shift, click and drag for getting zoomed in, but we're not gonna really see the three-dimensional change until we get closer down to the terrain. And we have to turn on terrain down here to even make that happen. So let's hit enter. Let's get zooming in. Nice. So basically currently this is not a saved place. So if I want to save this, I'll click on my places and then save. If I had not clicked on my places, it would go into temporary places. And then when I quit, I can lose that document. So now what we can do is we can actually get rid of the Mesa Verde Drive place. Boom, that's gone because it's saved down here. Come here, right click, get info. Let's move this dialog into the frame. Let's do X. Let's go back up here. You can change your style, color, get a different marker. Let's make it a volcano. I just really like the volcano. Sometimes it gets a bit big for me, so like reducing it. You can upload your own icons, save them, custom icon, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna say, okay. Now with this, I can't really see what's going on. Like I know from being on land what the property parcel looks like. What I can do is come down to Earth Pro. Again, we're using Google Earth Pro, so you can download that for free. And click US Parcel Data. Now I've got my two parcels. So now I can actually come in and say, well, I want to map out those parcels and make them my, my plat map, basically. So what I can do is I can come in here. I can grab either the polygon or the show ruler. Do the show ruler. Click on polygon. This will tell us how many square inches we're going to be working with. And what I do is just come over from my first point, click once. Most property lines are straight lines. This one's got a slight curve to it. So I click the right mouse button to unclick that. And I just come back. And of course I can zoom in as much as I want to to find everything out. Come over here. And I'm basically done. Now if I want to delete this point, I first have to click this and now right click. But we don't want to do that. So I'll put it back in. So my shape is done. I've got that first, that northern parcel. It'll tell me how many square feet. Let's look at how many acres that is. Okay, 6.23 acres up in that section. And I can either clear or I could save it. I obviously want to save this. So this is Parcel A North. Add more description. This is entrance parcel hilltop. Style color. We can say our plat maps can be a pink if we want. So I've got all my pink colors. Let's grab this bad boy. You can also make it 80%. Click and drag that back on top of that. Now my line's gonna be 80% stroke. If I want to fill, I can choose that fill. 20% I've already saved. Move to fill the outline. You can see what the change looks like. Let me just say okay. You can also look at there's more measurements, miles, square feet, you can all that stuff, altitude, clamp to ground. You want to pull stuff off of ground, etc. 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 So now we've got that. Now what we'll do is we'll move down to here. The thing regarding when you want to be working on drawing stuff, you usually want to have your entire view available for what you're working with. So now we got our polygon again. What I'll do though is I can actually zoom in on this part, find my first point, boom, and then zoom out. This is the annoying part. 
it can't pan while having this be zoomed in. So what I sometimes have to do is do this little dance. <laughs> Get this little guy in my way. And then come back here. Boom. And then come back down here. And then let's zoom out. And then we'll come down here. And that line's already straight up. Great. Save. Should have our same style, which it doesn't, unfortunately. So let me just grab that. Grab that. Grab that. Build that line. Okay. Now again, I didn't name it when we had it in there, so this is parcel B South. Uh, you notice that we didn't have Poco Pico Farm highlighted. So these two parcels didn't get dragged in. So now we're gonna actually move these in here. Move these in here. Move them down. I wanna do Command Shift N, add a new folder. This is the parcels. Say okay. And now I can actually drag these guys into the parcels. That way I can turn this layer off when I don't want to see it, like Mesa Verde, and then parcels, I can turn it on and off. That visibility factor. So now we got our parcel data, boom, take that off, keep that in, and now you can see that that is that hilltop section is 6.3, and this one was a 6.23 on the north, got them moved around, there you go, so 10.6, so almost 17 acres, probably 17 acres if I was extremely accurate with where the placement of those, those lines are. Great, so now we got our parcels, let's look at a little bit at some of the tools that we can work with. So again, layers, you have different random things that you can put on like the roads, ocean weather. So just explore all those different types of things. Turn on the entire database theoretically, I guess not. But I just like hiding that sometimes. Sometimes we make that pulled up so you have more space for all your all your tools. This is a really cool feature. This is basically like the Wayback Machine on the internet. You just click 1995 and it'll actually take you to the earliest known satellite photo for that. Uh, view view zoom so this is a great resource for being able to find out okay so what's the history of this site if it's available a lot of times you're not going to get as good of resolution for some of these photos especially back in 1995 but what we can do is say oh wow it's nice to know that it was all avocado farms so you probably have some very heavy consumption of nutrients you can see how roadway and access has been where traditional lines of water are accumulating. And then we can just basically go through bit by bit and find out, oh, okay, we got some really great dense cover from that avocado farm up there. Things got cleared out. It looks like that section started becoming abandoned. Yep, totally abandoned. Upper portion is good. We know some large changes, stuff's getting cleared. You can barely make it out, but we, now we start noticing that oh, stuff's getting planted down there. You can actually see that ponds are being filled in. Okay, good to know. And more agricultural. So a great tool with this Wayback Machine, depending on your site's history, is that sometimes you might find a better photo compared to another one. Like this one has some great Great contrast with the colors, but we can't see so much what's going on. This one's darker, et cetera, et cetera. But by going through this, you can really learn the history of a site very quickly. I mean, it's only going back 20 years, but that's still a great amount of time so far. So now we can see that we're actually losing the avocados up above, but down below, we're seeing that impact directly on the size of our ponds. 
So either the use that's been, because I know this was all shut off about four years ago. It started letting it go, go die, letting it go die, letting it die. <clears throat> and now we can see the impact of that on the water down below. So must have been a nice wet year in 2010 because these ponds are actually still full. You can see this is in September. So this is really far into our dry season here in Southern California. But now you can see that two years later, ponds are pretty much almost dried out. Nothing, just whatever weeds are growing in the bottom, full death on the upper, camp, upper slope, whatever little survivors are making it. And then basically you just go through and find the map that you wanna work with. Since currently, obviously that's our latest map and it's not that good, I'm gonna go back one more. That's gonna be my map. So then I can keep that there. And now what I can do with this is actually I can save an image of it. Let's get this guy out of the way. So I clicked up here to save image. I have tons of map options. Make it black and white, make it just slightly configuration, compass, title, description, save. Cancel, you know, save it where I'm gonna save it. Resolution is maximum. This is a great benefit of Pro. Click Save Image. Another option I could do is just go Command P, and then now I can edit the information up there. This is from one I was just working with. Click here and just say Refresh from View. Nothing's gonna be visible because I turned off our Poco Pico farm. So now if I click Refresh from View, now it'll actually tell me my parcel. It's only gonna show me what I've zoomed in. Do page setup, turn it vertical. Now it's gonna be a vertical. Got my scale, Poco Pico farm. Boom, now it's all set. And I would just print, save PDF, map options, etc. So I'm just gonna close that. So what I want to show you right now though is let's pull back up layers. Sometimes this may or may not be turned off, but let's toggle on terrain. Now we can actually see that we're gonna have a little bit of terrain. You can see there's some of that change with how that line was drawn. So it's good to draw some of your stuff when you're in the flat view, because now it's actually showing us that there is that hump right there. Sometimes when you first open this, under preferences, under navigation, it'll have automatically tilt while zooming. You don't want to have that on, because all you have to do is hold down shift and click and drag. And that's how you can get into the three-dimensional view. When you hold let go dev shift, you have the pan option, hold down shift, you have the three-dimensional view. So this is an amazing resource for being able to actually go through and check out how a site is looking topographically. So we can definitely see how our watersheds are set up and see where the ridge lines like, roughly are set up and then basically go from there. If you wanna get, get so discombobulated and you can't figure out which way is up, you just press U for up and then N for north and then zoom out and find yourself again. So if you're just drawing out stuff, I recommend pulling off terrain so you can get a two dimensional drawing and then you can go from there. I'm trying to think if there's anything else at the moment. If you want lines, you know, just draw your line. It tells you the inches, distance, everything. And then we can clear. If we want path, this is cool, show elevation profile. If we wanted to do a path along this road. Boom, boom. If you turn off show elevation profile, it won't do this whole zoom out thing to you. It just gets kind of annoying. But anyway, so again, if you want to get rid of these buttons, one of these dots, you have to click that one and then right click. Now if I click though, 
it's going to pull from wherever that last point was. So just consider that. But now what we can do down here is we can say, oh, what's the elevation along that road? Oh, nice. It's actually climbing up here. So we know that, that roadway heading down could potentially pull water onto our property from all that catchment area above. So this is another really nice benefit. You can also do that. Let's just clear that and then we'll get out of that. So that's just a brief intro into setting up your Google Earth and how to get around. Again, you can click the end to get north. You can pan, tilt. You can get down this Google Street View. If there's a Google Street View, it takes us right into it. Boom, I can look around at the property. Again, this is a great tool for saying like, wow, all the avocados look pretty healthy and nice here. I wonder when that photo was taken. <laughs> Exit street view. Gets us back up there. Again, U and zoom out. Or what we can also do is just click our click our location and it'll zoom us out there. Hope that's really helpful. Welcome, this is the intro into SketchUp. I'm using SketchUp Pro, but you can do this with regular SketchUp. So I do Command Shift I, get model info, geolocation. I want to add a geolocation. Move this so that we can actually see what we're doing on a map. And what we do is say thanks, Trimble. Yeah, we know. Enter in our address, search, boom. We're going to zoom out to our extent of what our property is basically right there. You can get a little bit wider if you want to get a little more of your watersheds. So for this one, since it's 17 acres, I'm going to do that just so I can show off some of the topography. Click select region, automatically grabs it. Just grab a pin, move it around. I like to center my crosshairs roughly on a good portion of it. So let's get up about here. I think that'll be good for us. And just go grab. What it's doing is it downloading the topographical information and the site map from Google Earth. It doesn't always grab the best photo or image, unfortunately, but that's for a different discussion. Again, you can set your dimensions, units, text, rendering, statistics, all that stuff here. We're just going to use that for right now. And now what we'll see is that we actually have this great setup. So I want to customize my toolbar. And I'm going to drag up, if I can find it in the amazingness that is, there we go, toggle terrain. Let's drag toggle terrain up in there. And I'll just click done. Can't really see that on your screen. You'll see it when you open it. Turn toggle terrain on, which gives us some options in a panel that you can't see right now. We've got these layers. And I could also do that manually like that, but toggle terrain just works so much faster. So what we'll do is we'll leave toggle terrain off. And what we want to do is actually I have keyboard commands set that you'd want to do under file or SketchUp preferences. You can set up all these shortcuts to do whatever you want. So right now I have rectangle is set to my K key because that's what it is in Adobe Illustrator. That's what I use. So I'm pressing Q to get my orbit, because that's what I've done, K to get my rectangle, and I'm going to click out here and draw around the entire box. Boom. So 
I can't select the Google Earth map because it's invisible, but I can select our rectangle by just double clicking, making sure it's all blue like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually press the M for move tool, which is over here. You'll see that move tool right there. Come to a corner, I click, and I drag. And I'll notice that I'm on the blue axes. I can hold shift to stay on that axis. And I'm, but I'm not making a copy, so now I need to hit option. And now I'm going to make a copy. You can see the copy is visible. And I just want to go up four feet. I can actually say, let's say two foot contours. So I'm going to do two feet. And then I'm going to multiply that by, we know it's probably about 170 feet. So I could theoretically do 85. 85 copies of it, but let's just do 90. So do times 90, boom, that's everything. So now I can grab it all, group it, I'm gonna toggle terrain on, and now we can see that, oh, we're missing a couple of the spots because that elevation was just for the site. So all I have to do is no worries, I'm gonna move this whole group Again, holding shift so I can stay down. If I need to pan and move, I can press my mouse wheel tool and move around. I can hit space bar because that's what I've set for my pan tool. And then you can do that. We moved it the wrong way. So I'm just going to move here, get my move tool. I'm going to drop so it's at least I know that she's outside of the lowest point on the blue axis. And then I'm going to come in, double clicker, grab the topmost layer, make a copy again, hold down option, two feet up, let's do times 100 just to make sure that we get everything. Oh, didn't get it, times 150, there we go. Notice I'm not escaping out of this so that I can actually still do that. So as long as I don't click any other hotkeys or click out or click away, I can still adjust that. So we can even do 300. I'll show us what 300 looked like. But 150 got us what we needed. Let's look up. Oh, nope. We did need to have 160. Nope. <laughs> 290. Let's just do that. There we go. Great. Now I'm going to select all right click intersect faces with selection it's going to take a little bit of time because right now it's drawing it's basically communicating with with that three-dimensional model saying every time one of these planes intersects what's existing in the model draw a line so it's pretty much drawing our contour lines right now so theoretically if we click our group and we hide it we should have all these beautiful topographical lines. And what do we got? We got them. It's a little kind of crazy right there looking at that. It makes me a little nauseous. But we do have our two foot topographical lines. Might be a bit egregious for this just based on the fact of how much kind of gross information I'm looking at right now. <laughs> So maybe you might want to do like five foot contours, but the nice part is, is that we can actually definitely see what the topography is, is trying to tell us. So we can group that line segment and now if we turn off Google Earth Terrain, we'll actually see that we have find our ridges, our valleys. Obviously, at the scale, and you can see the fidelity that is SketchUp, they have just these giant squares. So I wouldn't use this ever for an actual contour map information-wise, because you're going to get some 
some interesting things. Some tools are to find existing topo maps, download stuff from GIS websites, anywhere where you can get a topo map, and then you can insert that and do a match to extents. So that's a brief introduction on to how to use Google Earth with Google SketchUp to locate a site and then also to draw out some contour maps, contour lines on your map to get a better idea of what your contour lines are. Obviously you may not want to use a two foot size because that's just kind of ridiculous. <laughs>